The Bear Season 1, Episode 1 and 2 Thoughts. Now, let's dive right in. Right, for those who don't know, I will be going over the two episodes in chronolo chronological order. If you don't care about the first of these two episodes, the time code for the second one will be in the description box. But, yeah. Spoilers for both of these episodes. Absolutely love these episodes. Really glad that I decided to check out this show. You know, the, the take said some very positive things about it, and I tend to agree. So, yeah. Um, really appreciate the, the commentary on... Um, the... the um, yeah, ma masculinity, basically... The, you know, the characters of Carmi and Richie are both, like, I think I'll cover Richie first. He's definitely struggling with accepting help from others, you know, and I realize there's an issue with, you know, he, he feels, he's basically, you know, he was friends with Mikey until Mikey died, and... You know, he wanted to be the one to take over the place. He feels like Carmi is, you know, trying to take something from him. You know, he doesn't have Mike anymore, and now he might lose the restaurant. You know, is what he feels like, even though Carmi clearly is okay with them. Like, you know, anyway, the... the at least I get the sense that Carmi's main issue with Richie still being at the restaurant, is that Richie constantly tries to undermine him, you know, which is this thing, you know, he says in episode two, you know, I basically, you know, he's like five years old, you know, so, and and you can understand how he, you know, yeah, where he's coming from. Carmi's big issue is that he really does feel like, you know, this is this is important to the family. You know, I, I forget exactly who said it, but someone tells him. I think it might be his sister says to him, "Nobody's asking you to to do this." But you know, he feels like the the you know it's the it's the big thing for you know it used to be their fathers, then it was Mikey's, now it's in you know Carmi owns it. He inherited it from Mikey according to the will and. Yeah, he, he, you know, the uncle is there saying, I'll, look, I'll buy it off you, turn it into an Applebee's, you won't have to worry, you know, you don't, you don't belong here, you belong in, you know, a fancy restaurant, you know, but, yeah, he, he feels like the, the you know, because that, at the end of the day, like, the, the, you know, it's not... It's more of an emotional issue for him than a logical one, which is why it is this thing of wounded masculinity or masculinity in crisis kind of thing. So, the yeah, so we open the first episode on a dream, which not gonna not gonna try to interpret. I I saw someone try to interpret it, and I don't. Yeah, I'm not great at like that kind of interpretation. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with. You know, almost everything that in these two episodes literally happened. You know, there's a couple of dreams. You know, and I do have some thoughts on one of the other dreams, but I'm going to otherwise stick to the, the... Yeah, but yeah, very stressful as he wakes up, and just from right away, there's so many problems. I really appreciate, like, I know I, I saw one negative user review on Metacritic. Only one. You know, almost all of them are, like, really, really positive. But there was one that was, like, a negative review, and he was like, this is just too stressful, you know, which I appreciate... I don't love giving a negative review for that, but, you know, to each their own, at least, like, they didn't say it's a bad show, they just said, I find it too stressful, you know. But, yeah, um, the, the, let's see, the, um, yeah, you know, he's, he's dealing with the, the, you know, here's 25 pounds, 25, I, I bought, you know, Oh, wait, was it pounds? Well, whatever. You know, I, I bought 200. I only paid for 25. Wow. That's that's not great. And I, I don't blame the other guy for that. You know, if you only paid for 25, that's, the, you know. And we see a, a very, very quick, like, a lot of, like, I'm not sure they're all bills, but, like, you know, 
he's he's having money problems clearly and i like the you know that we we see the the game the bowl breaker which you know that's a good metaphor for you know yeah it is it is a bowl breaking situation that he's in everyone is breaking his bowls and we get the stills from the childhood and you know happy kind of you know and yeah great montage setting up the location and the tone and he's having to sell clothes that i'm guessing like maybe the 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 parents old clothes or something because he's talking about like oh they're from like 1944 and just, yeah and let's see yeah and and he goes over sydney's resume and you know a lot of really impressive stuff there um ups uh i don't know that restaurant uh no like um the ups oh oh the ups you know and yeah she explains you know i had to i had to drive for them to make money for the for the education that is something that that happens to a lot of people and and i get the sense that Carmi himself maybe didn't, you know, and that's why, because because it is like a lot of a lot of people, uh, you know, and I, I appreciate you know. First he asks, so what are you doing here? And then she asks, you know, I said I, I know who you are. Um, what are you doing here? You know, kind of thing, right? I wanted to briefly say I really appreciate like I don't find a lot of movie and movies and TV and such that actually had like I I'm fortunate enough that I my my job is not as stressful as as this and like hypothetically my life shouldn't like like my home life and and leisure time and such shouldn't be but I have a very difficult time not obsessing over things and and stressing and such so yeah this is this is very much my speed like and the the incredibly fast pace really you know just you know, okay, so there's that problem, that problem, that problem. Okay, I'm trying to solve that problem, but oh, no, then there's this other problem. You know, that's that's kind of that's how I feel a lot of the time. So, yeah, really appreciate a, a show that actually reflects that. And I can absolutely imagine, like, for a lot of people, this is going to be way too stressful because they're, you know, and and some people like watch stuff like, you know, they're they're trying to like relax to you know, and and for sure, I have like. There's, there's stuff I watch when I just want to relax as well. Now, the, yeah, and we, we see the, the kitchen are very set in their ways. The titular system, which, you know, they're trying to abide by and they're like, you know, it works. And Carmi is like, we have to change the system. And, yeah, so the, the English was improving of one of the... Ah... Uh, I forget it, it's one yeah one of the one of the characters the English has improved and the other you know and and then one of the other black guys suggests you know did you did you kid did you capture a boat or kidnap a boat cap something like that you know and he's like no your mother taught me during sex you know which yeah that's that's actually that's a very clean delivery of a like I've never heard like you know you'd expect them to be like no your mom told me, you know, but no, your mom told me during sex, that's, but I guess that's like a, you know, if you're not, if maybe, I mean, I get the impression that English is maybe not his first language, so that's that version of, but, but yeah, you know, and I really appreciate, I, I really appreciate the, the, what's it called, it's a very integrated, like, there's a lot of diversity, and like, if you go to New York, I was in New York for like half an hour, you know, uh, what, like, almost 20 years ago by now, I do not understand why there's, like, movies and TV that pretend, like, New York is white. Like, it's not. It's very, very diverse, you know. I, I acknowledge that not everywhere in New York is equally diverse, but, like, it's just so, so, yeah. You know, the, the, um, right, I suppose it's, I should maybe explain, the reason I was only there for half an hour was that I was going to another part of America, and I was waiting for a, um, I, don't I didn't wait like half an hour, but I was, I was going between two different 
public transportation things, and then there was this light weight, you know, but yeah, the, the, yeah, I really appreciate it, and, and the show acknowledges, you know, yeah, there's some, there's some language stuff, you know, um, Tina, who's like Latina, is that why they named her, whatever, <laughs> you know, she's, she like, she doesn't understand why, you know, every time Carmi calls her chef, she's like, Jeff, what do you mean? You know, which, like, I acknowledge it is also like that's also like a class thing, not just a, a language thing. But but yeah, you know, the yeah and yeah, there's a lot of problems with the family and yeah. So spaghetti was taken off the menu, and you know, some of them are like, but it sold really well, and Carmi is like, no, it's you know, I realize it sold well. But it was, you know, what was it? It was undercooked and over seasoned. It's off the menu. And let's see. Um, what the? Okay, I. Yeah, moving on. Um, yeah, we're told the the right, right. Yeah, the the place has been around for more than twenty five years, and for twenty five years. Was the thing about they they didn't do the thing with the bread and the what's it called the bread and the sauce or something like that that he suggests they do and Richie comes in and says no you're not going to do what your boss told told you to do you're going to do what I said really loving seeing Eben Moss Bakrak uh, who plays Richie again loved him on the Punisher, so absolutely, super happy to see him again, and really, really cool that he's like such a different, like he's a much more aggressive, dominating character here. And yeah, we we learn that you know Ballbreaker was this Norwegian Mortal Kombat knockoff that was almost immediately removed, and you know they they still have it, and that's also why you know later a bunch of nerds show up. Who are like, oh, I haven't been able to play that for so long, you know. You know, they're probably luck lucky to get an emulator of it or something, you know, so so yeah. And and the thing with, you know, so um when did you last empty the the uh, I d I don't know, I'm not you know, is okay, so you know, check and money just comes pouring out and he also late later he's like, Okay, you know, here here's a, here's a three three hundred in like quarters, I guess. Holy crap, you know. Which to be like, I understand the other guy. Like, dude, coins making up three hundred. Like, I can't. You know, he, one of them is gonna have to go to the bank, and the other guy is like, why don't you do it? You know, it's the, you're not gonna carry around, uh, you know, this massive bag of freaking quarters. You know, so, so yeah, let's see, three hundred. If it's in quarters, I guess that's one thousand two hundred coins. That's a lot to be carrying around as a just yeah. I don't know. I guess maybe not all quarters, but you know. So of course he you know he puts it on social media. If you come here, you can play ball breaker, and then you know. A bunch of people show up and they're like, you know, Szechuan sauce, Szechuan sauce, and it's just it's a whole thing. And Richie is telling an anecdote and just will not shut up. And Carmi's like, dude, we have work to do. And he's like, no, 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 and, and it's clearly not important. Like it's a, and and he says, we're we're doing work here. No, you're not. You're just. But but it's the thing of you know he's like. Basically, to Richie, Carmi is like an annoying younger brother, so he can't, he's struggling to take, you know, even when Carmi is making a good point, he can't, because again, wounded masculinity, he thinks, you know, I'm, I'm older, so I have, I'm, I'm in charge, Let's see. and he's clearly very, you know, it's, it's, He's insecure because Carmi is more educated than him. And that's something that a lot of men who struggle with feeling confident in their masculinity, they they can't really handle if someone they think is lesser than them is more well-educated than them. Now, and, you know, I've, I've said before, I... 
I think there is a some aspect of a crisis of masculinity. I I don't. I think it's frustrating that we're talking so much about men's problems when women and LGBTQIA have much bigger problems. But you know, at the end of the day, it is you know it is going to come up. I appreciate that at least a show that talks about it is so diverse. Does also talk about problems that women have. You know, so yeah. And and ultimately, like, it's this thing of just, I believe the movement started with good intent. But it, you know, a, a chunk of the people who say, oh, you know, what about men's problems? Are these hateful chuds, bigots, who don't want to deal with, you know, who, who don't like that other people's problems are being dealt with. You know, I, I forget exactly who it was, but one YouTuber recently pointed out, you know, we see every time that a minority group tries to have their problems dealt with, you see, you know, straight white cis men try to, to take it back, especially con conservative ones, you know, so... Did it just sound like I said the C word? I was trying to say conservative in my brain. Anyway, yes, so the, the, you know, first, you know, when in response to the, the feminist movement, you have men's rights, as if we men don't already have all the rights we need. Like, there's no, we don't have less rights than, than women. It's, that's not a thing. You know, um, uh, uh, LGBTQIA pride, then some people made straight pride, which is just the most, like, straight pride and super straights and, and these things, like, just, how are you this insecure about something that is not under attack, like, at all? I'm straight. I've never felt like someone was trying to, to say that I was bad for being straight. Anyway, um, uh, uh, yeah, Black Lives Matter, you know, and then you have a bunch of white hateful shits make all lives matter and blue lives matter as if anyone was contesting that it's bad when cops die or that it's bad when white people die. Like, the problem is that people of color are not getting justice when cops kill them. You know, it's, it's yeah. Anyway, uh, let's see. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, Carmi's been looking for the knife that he wanted to use, and it's on the floor. And it's one of the... Like, I honestly, I thought, oh, he's gonna, like, shout at them or something. But it, it is this thing of, like, we don't know exactly who put it there. And if he starts shouting, he's not gonna find out. Regardless of how exactly it ended up there, it's a sign of disrespect. You know, it's it's one of them intentionally or otherwise, possibly subconsciously, saying, you don't belong here, your fancy fucking knives don't belong here, get out, we were doing fine without you. And, you know, and, and based on the age of some of them, yeah, I think some of them have been working there for 25 years, you know. And then in comes Fancy Pants, who's got a college education, and just, yeah. And, yeah, so the... the you know, Carmi goes to meet Sis, uh, Sugar, and the, the, you know, you have the thing of, you know, why doesn't she come here? You'll have to ask her. And, yeah, she, she points out, you know, Uncle is willing to buy, and, you know, Carmi doesn't like that Uncle will turn it into a Applebee's. And, you know, Sugar points out, you know, it's not, you know, you don't, need to, to do this, but it is this thing, you know, like in the, there's, there's one point where I think it's, I think it's in the second episode, but there's this subliminal thing of, you know, he, he never loved you. And it is this thing of, you know, I mean, maybe he feels like if this place goes bankrupt, if he sells it, you know, Maybe that's why his father didn't want him working there when he was younger. His father was worried that he would fuck it up. And if he takes over and then sells it, I guess that's proving the old man right. I guess he was right to not love him. I guess he was right 
to to give Mikey special treatment. You know, it's it's this thing of you know, it's it's he feels like it's all that's left. It's all that's left of the family. The, you know, the father's gone. I think the mother's gone. We, I don't think we've heard her mentioned. You know. The uncle doesn't care about if the place is this sandwich shop or a an Applebee's, which, you know, that he's he's not taking any pride in the the fact that the family built it. You know, he just thinks of it as a building that could be making money. Um. The the then you have the yeah and you know Richie really you know struggles to accept Carmi. Mikey's dead. Yeah, you know, if Carmi gives up on this place, that's it. That's, you know, that he feels like that's the family's legacy gone. And, you know, again, like, I... I think an argument against, like, I don't know if maybe the people working there would have difficulty getting another job. I certainly can imagine, like... Applebee's probably doesn't like a big a big like franchise is not gonna respect the fact that these people know what they're doing, you know, if they have specific habits that the franchise doesn't like. You know, they're just gonna discard them and get someone who will do things exactly the you know. So there is that. I really appreciate that one of the characters is evil carrot and another is robot. Yeah, those have got to be some of the, the some of the protesters. Anyway, they're not protesters, nerds, the, whatever. And I say that without any. I'm a nerd, you know. I'm not disrespecting nerds. Only the hateful ones. Anyway, the the you know, and the really obnoxious ones. They're, they're banging on the glass. Like, come on. The the you know, if they were fighting for rights, I'd be down with it. But they're not. They're just being dipshits. Anyway, the, the, um, crap, lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, the franchise is not gonna make sure these people are still hired. I think that's probably the only, like, really logical reason for, for Carmi to be, and I, I don't think that's what he's, th he's thinking of. You know, he, he has, like, it's part of his identity, you know, he remembers, as a kid, he liked the place. You know, that's also what what Sydney says. You know, she she liked going there as a kid. Uh, you know, there what was it? Her father took her there all the time. You know, once a week or so, something like that. You know, so it's it's purely emotional, and it's this thing of yeah, he's he's made it part of his identity. He feels the need to prove himself, and that's a big part of you know, if we're talking like wounded masculinity. It is this thing of like having to prove oneself, you know, the fact that he's like, they're losing money and all this stuff, you know, like logically he should either sell it or get someone else to, to run it, you know, or, or at least help run it, but no, because it's his, it's his, it was his father's, then it was his brother's, now it's his, He's gonna do it, and and people are pointing out you're losing money, you're changing the menu, you're changing the system. Things are not going well. He's he's really reluctant to accept that. Also, really great, really everyone there was great acting so far. Really, really great stuff. Anyway, then we have the let's see, yeah, yeah, and the the yeah, Sugar points out, you know, he he says I'm trying to fix the place. And Sugar points out, no one's asking you to. And let's see. yeah, yeah, and and the you know, so how's how's the food? Redundant and white, like you. <laughs> and yeah, we just see how everything either breaks or is broken. You know, there's the there's the thing with the oven, and then there's the 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 knives are not sharp enough, and all these things just yeah. Richie is grateful for Philip K. Dick. Okay. I have and will say a lot of harsh things about Richie trying to... Dude's got good taste. That's, that's a, yeah. I am grateful for Philip K. Dick. And, let's see, yeah, and, and, you know, Carmi goes out to try to stop, and he gets in the middle of these nerds, and they start punching, 
and I love that you know Rich Richie puts a puts a stop to the fight. And once Carmi knows, okay, Richie has got my back, then he punches one of the nerds again before leaving, you know, and yeah. You know, Richie fires a gun into the air, which I gotta say, based on episode two, is that, do we know if that's the gun that Mikey shot himself with? Because that's, I, that's a really bad taste for, for Richie to be doing, but I can imagine, I, I don't think they have more than they need to have at this place. Of, of anything, but yeah, you know, Richie gets on the, the megaphone, he's like, okay, you incel QAnon 4chan Snyder Cut motherfuckers. Yeah, Richie is spot on about some things, and I like how he lays down, you know, he some, some rules, and yeah, that is it for the first episode, so that gets us into... Episode 2, Hands. And, yeah, so we start in this flashback, New York, one year ago. And the the drill sergeant, I mean, head chef, you know, he keeps asking the, the younger, you know, like, Carmi says, ah, it's still, you know, it's not quite good enough, you know, but he's not, like, super harsh with her. Then the head chef comes in, and he just, he keeps asking why until she said, you know, I'm doing a bad job or something like that. And yeah, he's really, really harsh with, with Carmi. Just, yeah, really, really brutal. That is Joel McHale. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, didn't really recognize him, but yeah, I, I see it now. Well, I, Thing. Yeah, I'm not. I don't. I'm not really used to Joel McHale wearing wearing glasses. No, he he really killed it. Like I I've liked Joel McHale for for a long time. I used to watch what's it called Talk Soup, The Soup, possibly first one, then the other. I I forget. But yeah, you know. And he like under his breath says, "You should be dead." Jesus fucking Christ. And you know, back to the the present, and we see all these spills in the kitchen that they're, you know. Yeah, at least some of them they're cleaning up, and Richie and Carmi argue again, and the ice cream machine is broken, which does bring them up to the levels of the, your average McDonald's. <laughs> when when was the last time we sold ice cream? I forgot we had it. And, yeah, we get some, you know, Carmi's eating at home, we get some extreme close-ups of food preparation and, and such very like effective and we have the the nightmare with the subliminal messages on the printouts that you know just in case anyone missed them or forgot them or something one of them was you killed him and another was he never loved you you know and you know you yeah uh, i'm thinking you killed him is in reference to mikey but i guess we don't know. If, I guess it could be the father, but I'm thinking he never loved you is about the father, not Mikey. But yeah, you know, and, and that is the thing that is, you know, many, many men with wounded masculinity, that's part of it. You know, they didn't feel like their father loved them and, and many didn't. They're, they're in a lot of cases, they're right. And that's another aspect of wounded masculinity. A lot of men are taught that love towards anyone at least anyone other than maybe their partner, and even then is, uh, is wrong, you know, or is, is gay, as if there's anything wrong with that, or, or, you know, feminine, as if there's anything wrong with that. And the, the, um, so, so yeah, you know, they, they learn that it's wrong for them to love their children, to show love for their children, and, yeah, their children end up you know, many of these children end up with emotional issues. And, let's see, yeah, and, and Sydney, I did some extra, extra credit, and she's, like, in, made an entire plan of all the things they could improve and how, which I really, I, I seriously respect, and it's, it's the kind of thing, you know, that's something you see from, like, you know, a member of a minority who really wants to make an impression in a world that, you know, I, I don't know if, if 
cooking in New York is also like dominated by white men, but so much of society in here in the West is dominated by white men. So yeah, you know, she has to go above and beyond to really prove that she deserves to be there. And yeah, like you know, t you know, talk about something no one asked for, and she does a really excellent job. You know, it, you know, Carmi points out, dude, look, Sydney, this is great stuff. It's just, it's a lot. You know. And, you know, and I, f I feel like, you know, it's one of those things where, like, hypothetically, she could maybe have, like, texted or called or something and been like, hey, I'm considering, like, doing this extra credit thing. What do you think? What if he says no? Or if she just says, just FYI, I'm going to bring it, so just put yourself in the mindset of, you know, te test grading what if he says, don't bring it, but the moment she has, you know, put it right in front of him, open on the right page, look, here, here, and here, this is what, I, you know, okay, what is he going to do? Throw it in the trash? That would be ridiculous. So, so just, yeah. And in comes the new health inspector, and we have, the, you know, what happened to Ron? Ron's gone. Like, gone, gone. Oh. I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry for your loss. So anyway, and the just, yeah, holy crap. Richie does not get along with, so her name is Nancy. Her name really is Nancy Chore. I thought that was actually possibly a joke. But yeah, the, the last name Chore. But but yeah, you know, can I see some ID? And, you know, she, she opens and shows. Interesting. What's interesting about it? It's, it's, an, it's an interesting logo. You know, just... And it's this thing of, like, you know, Richie really struggles to just say, fair enough, come on in, you know, but, but, because it's like, he keeps saying that he doesn't discriminate, but he also keeps dropping these little things, like, he is at least somewhat sexist, you know. When he meets Sydney the first time, he calls her... Uh, uh, sweetheart, I think it is, instead of, you know, he's just been told her name, and just, yeah, just, just don't do it, you know, like, sweetheart, that's the kind of thing you say to your partner, you know, don't say it to, uh, yeah, you know, they're colleagues, you know, they're supposed, it's, it's not some, some, it's completely, it's really disrespectful to refer to one of your colleagues as, you know, that's, as, so, so, yeah, anyway, the, the, but, but yeah, you know, the fact that now the health inspector is female, that's something that he's struggling, that Richie is struggling with, you know, and, and Carmi is like, dude, just get over it, we have to, you know, like, and, and uh, to her credit, like, she does legitimately seem to only, you know, she's, she's by the book, the fact that they, like, like these things of these these microaggressions, she's not real. They they don't. She doesn't like make a thing out of that, which you could understand if she did. You know. Let's see, and you know, I I wouldn't rule out she might. Ah, uh, no, never mind. Um. But yeah, and we, we see the, the various violations, including cigarettes right by the, the stove, and as she points out, you know, possible contaminant, and it's like, you know, and like, in case someone watching this video right now is like, ah, cigarettes, you know, what's it, imagine if the, the, you know, yeah, some cigarette smoke got into one of the things, and it gets into some of the, the food, and then a child eats it, you know, you don't want that, that's completely, yeah, you know, and, and, you know, Richie's like, I, it'll take, it'll take five seconds to cook, I, I can't come back here for another 30 days, you know, and it's, yeah, you know, by the book, that's, that's the, yeah, and, let's see, that. yeah, so they, they get a C, which later, you know, I, I think it might be Richie writes, you know, Carmi using the, the C, you know, blaming him for, you know, and I, I like that, you know, the, the um, you know, there's, yeah, there's the thing of, you know, so suddenly 
Richie can't drive, you know. Sydney pointed out he drove, you, you know, he drove, I saw him drove, drive this morning, mm, yeah, you know, so, you know, he has the, the thing about he's, his license was uh, some, something, you know, he shouldn't be driving, and, you know, the, 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 yeah, suddenly he can't drive, and she's, you know, I guess I'll, I'll drive, and he really does not like that, you know, again, like, he really struggles to accept help from other people, especially people that he thinks of as people who aren't as good as him, better than him, and kind of thing. And yeah, really appreciate the the scenes between Rich and Sydney, like the, the really really great stuff. And I appreciate the you know you see that she, like she she perceives the microaggressions, but she knows you know if I if I fuck with him, it's you know I might. You know, we are going to have to work together kind of thing, you know. But, like, when, you know, he says, you know, if you're too emotional, you shouldn't start the car. And, you know, he, he hurries up and says that, you know, no, no, I, I mean, you know, I would be saying that to you if, if you were a man, you know. But then he says, you shouldn't drive if you're hysterical. And I think there's a chance that he maybe doesn't know, but it's still not. Don't use the word hysterical. It is, you know, historically it has been used to say that women are inherently lesser than men for feeling emotion, basically. And let's see. Yeah, you know, the various conversations, you know, the thing about, you know, Sydney asks, what, you know, are you cousin on father side or mother side and he says no n neither but you know he was Mikey's friend from childhood so the the you know Richie and Carmi call each other cousin even though there's no blood relation and you know that is also like you should you know they're, they're a found family basically or uh, maybe not quite they didn't completely choose to be each other's found family but the you know, there is a long, there's a lot of history there. And, yeah, you know, even at the store, like, he won't ask for help. He won't ask, you know, where is the caulk? He won't ask what kind of caulk to buy. You know, I, I love the part where he's, like, acrylic caulk. Other kind of caulk. And she's like, are you literally just reading the, you know, because it's like, dude, it's not going to say on the, the, the name of the caulk is not going to tell you what kind of caulk you need. If, if you don't already know, like if he was saying, okay, what I need is acrylic caulk, but no, he's just reading, you know, it's like, you have to find it, buy it, get back, caulk it as soon as at all possible. You can't just be, stand, like, just bite the head off your shame. Ask someone who works with it to help you get the right caulk, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah. And then we learn that Mikey took loans, for, or rather, yeah, yeah. We in the we the audience and Carmi learn Mikey took loans from. I want to get his character name right, Uncle Jimmy, and three hundred grand. Which, yeah, like you know, Jesus Christ, that's right. And you know, it's you know, and now Carmi has to deal with it because he owns the place now. So just yeah. And um, yeah, and and in the once they get into the car, there's more conflict to to head back between Richie and Sydney, and then you know Richie's like, why does she, why does she keep calling? And you know, finally answers a call, and you know his five year old daughter is is scared and crying because you know it's this thing of like apparently she's in a new school which. You know, they, they mentioned earlier that there's like a divorce thing or something. So, yeah, the, the you know, if, if maybe the mother has custody and moved, you know, for a five-year-old, it, you know, at it, it, pretty much any age, especially as a child or teenager, but at five years old, having to meet new people, and, and you know, the other five-year-olds there don't like that a new you know, five-year-old came in, and, yeah, and, and he said, I, how can you even ask, of course I still love you, 
more so than ever if possible you know and and I do really appreciate you know that does help humanize Richie who's by this point done and said a lot of shitty things you know and and you know yeah he said you know so how old how old is she five like Carmi you know that's that's how he sees it to him Carmi is still that little shitty kid that you know you know so so yeah he's 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 really struggling with with that and I I really you know I think I'm pretty sure I bought the wrong cock yeah you did but I didn't <laughs> And again, that's the, you know, Sydney being this, you know, she, she's, she's determined to succeed in a white man's world as a black girl. So she, you know, I'm not saying that there's something wrong with those not putting in as much effort as she is, but just the, the reason she's putting in so much effort is this, this drive kind of thing. And yeah, you know, like just... It's it's a it's a great little thing, you know. She yeah, she went to the the guy, the one of the people that worked there, told that person the exact situation, and they helped her because that's what they're paid to do, you know. They're they're of course they're gonna help. And and then we you know, Carmi calls you know Sugar isn't picking up, so he calls Pete, and apologizes and like immediately it's like oh god no what did you do and you know Pete is like I really appreciate like Pete is just the friendliest nicest most polite it's just a, you know what it's perfectly okay because they took me to the ER and they gave me this thing that really helped a lot oh my fucking Christ Carmi hit the the partner of his sister so hard and repeatedly and in such a t tender spot that he had to go to the emergency room and and just you know and he's like don't even worry about it. just wow which is again you know almost definitely at some point like maybe we'll find out later but if i had to guess i'm thinking at some point Carmi and Sugar were arguing about something, and Pete tried to de-escalate because that, you know that's the sense I get from him. I don't think that he only recently started being this way. And the thing that he said to de-escalate set off Carmi, who felt like you know because it's a family thing, and and you know this is this is my thing. This is not your thing. You as another man are not supposed to get involved. You know, and and maybe Pete even said you shouldn't talk to her like that. And there's a lot of there's a lot of fragile, yeah, fragile men that cannot handle having that sort. Of, and and again, like ideally, when someone tells you something like that, you know, obviously if they're like if if they're a bigot, if they're spewing hatred, you know, you try not to let it get to you. But if not try to try to listen and and try to see it from their point of view try to try to do some soul searching or searching for a soul see if maybe they're making a point which let's be honest he probably was you know so so yeah and and Carmi attacked him let's see and yeah and and you know um sugar tells Carmi it's okay to ask for help you know and you know he he talks i i got to say i thought that was part of the dream the the thing that he was like cooking and he had to you know holy shit that was real you know and and yeah he's like you know, he he tells her that, and that's you know, and she points out that's not an unscary thing to you know, and and it it is this thing you know, it's a, it's a stereotype, but a lot of women are better at emotional intelligence and helping communicate, you know, yeah, open communication, you know, because that's the thing. Like, imagine if she was like, "Oh my fucking god, what's wrong with you?" Which, like, considering what he just said, would be you could understand if that was what she said, but instead she's like. That's not an unscary thing to say, so just please. I I sent you the you know I I didn't pick it was something Al and and 
Wait, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, maybe. Anyway, it, um, as far as I can tell, next episode is going to dive into it, so, you know. Uh, right, and I guess I haven't said yet, I'll probably do one of these videos per week, doing two episodes, until I'm caught up on Season 1, because according to Disney+, Plus, Season 2 is going to hit here early August, so I will be able to catch up on Season 1, and then dive directly into Season 2, and then, you know, I'll do... A weekly one and I can imagine it's like yeah actually I don't know if they're gonna if they're gonna because I feel like I heard that they dumped all the episodes at once which I can understand though I wouldn't I, I don't think I would recommend binging this show it, it's exhausting enough to to watch just one episode I, I chose to watch two watching all eight in in a single like if, if you're going to do that to yourself, like, right after, make sure you have something to, to calm yourself back down. Anyway, uh, let's see. The, yeah, and, and, you know, Richie finds the, the letter and at first puts it with the, you know, Carmi stuff, so he's going to find it, and then goes back, puts it back where it was. And, you know, Sydney's like, so, should I come in tomorrow or, you know, this... I feel like I've I've proven that I'm I'm good, you know, and yes, you're you're high, you're a past chef. And the the um what was it uh the um the thing Yeah, yeah, also in the car, you know, when when Sydney says I got the right cork and it's like Sydney's making moves. Of course, he's going to make a joke out of it. He's not quite emotionally mature enough to... To be clear, I also make jokes. In the, but yeah, you know, he's not just going to say, you're a lifesaver, thank you. You know, he's he's got to do a thing. Um, let's see, there was the... Right, and the... Yeah, it would make a lot of sense for it to be Alcoholics Anonymous. A lot of, you know, if you, if you struggle with your... You know, with... with feeling in, insecure, you you know, you might turn to alcohol and that, and some people turn violent, which, you know, he attacked Pete, so, yeah. And, you know, at the end we realized, no, those were not Richie's cigarettes, which, you know, he, he admitted to Sydney, but he didn't admit to Carmi, but no, those were actually Carmi's cigarettes, you know, and it, we, we see, you know, early, you know, he says, I haven't had a smoke all day, which is why he didn't discover it until now, you know, and yeah, earlier, you know, he took the cigarette, you know, he was, he was kneeling so he could, like, was he scrubbing the floor or scrubbing the inside, something, you know, but he had to kneel, and yeah, if he hadn't taken the pack out of his pocket, they might have just fallen out of his pocket, and he might not have realized. And he didn't think about that where he was putting the cigarettes was near the the stove, you know. So just yeah, I'm not sure if he's going to be willing to admit that one to Richie. Guess we'll see. But yeah, um, really loving this show so far. Uh, yeah. I can hardly believe that there was actually a time when I was just like, no, the only thing I'm going to use Disney Plus for is re-watching MCU and watching Disney Plus only MCU content. And just, yeah. Anyway, yeah, really, really loving this. Um, so yeah, please do not spoil one of the upcoming episodes. I realize a lot of people have watched all the episodes already in the comments and... Yeah, um, I'm not 100% certain yet if next week's video of mine on this show will be Friday. I'll, I'll see. I might move it around, but yeah. Tomorrow I will do a movie, so hope to catch you then.